But to be fair, we just kept losing dogs. Like, not losing it. We didn't lose it. We didn't lose the dog. They did not die. No dogs were harmed. No dogs were harmed. Everybody. Thank you for being here. This is uh, the Q&A for Hour of Lead. I'm Alexandra Chando, and let's just hop right in. I want to um, have everybody kind of introduce themselves and say how they got involved with this film. Um, All right, I'll start, go down here. Yeah, that's yeah that sounds great. Start, it'll be better as you get down there. Uh, so my name is Peter Winter. I'm a producer, uh, and Mr. Facinelli wrote this script seven years ago. And he sent it to me, and we tried for a very long time to make it, and then it finally happened. And we'll talk about that after we go down the line. Great. Yeah. Hi, I'm Alexi Archer. I was brought in as a producer and an actress. I'm Peter Fraschelli. I wrote uh, Hour of Lead and directed Hour of Lead. Mm. I'm Ann Hitch, and they asked me to do the movies, and I said yes because I wanted to work with Thomas Jane and Peter Fraschelli. Mm. <laughs> I'm Thomas Jane. Uh, I'm Ann's bitch. <laughs> but you got a I'm Sasha jacket. Long. He's got a snazzy and, uh, jacket though. A producer. Brandon's the guy that oh, held Sasha. the whole production together we the whole time we were Sasha shooting. Uh, a very important uh, job <laughs> to have around. If, we, if it weren't for Brandon, we wouldn't yeah, be here. Have Sasha up there. Sasha Chaban, who uh, was the composer of the film. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, terrific. Woo! Good. All right, well, Peter, you had said that this uh, was a seven-year process and um, finally got the movie made. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, Either Peter? Well, I'll just do it, and then, because then after that, I'm, no one will have to hear from me ever again. So, uh, so for me, the, the reason why we wanted to do the movie, uh, I felt this movie was ahead of the curve because it's a, uh, it's a genre piece that's trying to talk about something much more deep than a typical genre movie, which now movies are happening like that, like movies like Get Out, which is talking about racism in a, in a cool genre, or like Parasite, talking about the hierarchy of society in a cool genre, entertaining movie. And I felt when I first read Peter's script that that was that. That's, that's what this is, because it's a, it's a film about grief and healing and uh, trying to move on or not moving on and, and the ramifications of all that. So I felt it was something that uh, was a story worth telling. And uh, so then we went through all the battles, and I think Peter can tell you better about how it, at the end it ended up getting made, but that's the gist of it all. Battles. Yeah, battles. <laughs> uh, you know, it's independent filmmaking, so you just keep sliding around pieces until you finally get to make it. And, um, you know, the, many times I had money for the film, and then it fell apart, or an actor fell out, and then finally we got it going. Uh, Thomas Jane came on board. And then Ann came on board. And then, even then, we were supposed to start filming in June, remember? And then it went to July. And then then we were going to do it in September. And as an actor, like, I was turning down work because I was like, oh, well, we're going to be filming this month. And then all of a sudden, they push it. And then, you know, for six months, I was like, all right, is this happening? Is this happening? And then it did happen, and we ended up shooting it in December. Uh, So it was like another five months even from that point. Um, so it's, 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 it was a process. And we were going to be in some other state, remember? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean... What was it, that? You guys were scouting. We, and we, other, here's how crazy where was it, it was. I, it was Ohio? a crazy experience. Was it Ohio? We had uh, scouted in Ohio, right. and I was there for two weeks doing prep uh, in Ohio right. and uh, with me and Brandon. And, uh, and so we're there, and it couldn't have been going better. Like I was, it was around my birthday. We were supposed to start filming. I think the on my birthday or the day after, yeah. uh, we locked the location. Uh, we had all, secured a bunch of uh, local actors for, for the smaller roles, which were they were really fantastic. Um, we had RVs lined up. The RV park was beautiful, and it was closing down like three days before we started filming. Was when they were going to close down. We were just going to take it over, and uh, we, the whole crew was going to like sleep there, and and we it was. Great. And then we found out that uh, we weren't going to get the tax incentive in time. <laughs> so literally, it was, what do we do? Uh, so I was thinking we were just going to push till next year. And Brandon was like, no, we're going to go. We're going to keep going. I was like, well, how? So uh, we, we were supposed to film like literally in like seven or eight days. And 
and then they said, well, we can, we can get a tax incentive in Alabama. So Brandon said, let's jump in the car and go. <laughs> I was like, all right. So we drove for like eight hours and ended up in Alabama. We drove for days and days yeah. looking for a new location. And then, and then when we got there, it. I had nothing. Like, because all the crew, cast, everything was left behind. So it was just two people and we're making a movie in like seven days. And, and it was like insane. And many times I woke up thinking, this, we're not gonna make this movie. Uh, but to the testament of, of, of many people on this stage, they just kept, you know, kept it going and, and we were able to make it. I mean, we had, um, you know, I had no location scouts. So uh, it was me and Brandon, at, because everybody was literally left behind in Ohio and at that point, the other producers, the finance producers were like, you know, we're either going to pull the plug or not, or not, depending on if we can get a, a location. And so we found one in Selma. And then finally, I was like, OK, so we've got like, you know, six days to shoot. Uh, we could push a couple of days because we also had Christmas on the other end. So, uh, you know, the, we had to finish before Christmas. So we couldn't push that much. Um, so then when we found it in Selma, and then I got a call that they were like, well, we're not going to be able to get the, the, the crew and everybody down there because he had found out that it was like the worst cap crime capital. Yeah, one of the, of the murder, murder capitals in the so world. So far from everything. So, yeah, the, the crew was not He was like, traveling. we're not going to get a crew because it's the highest adventure. murder capital in the world. <laughs> I was like, but we're going to be in the woods. Does that make a difference? And so <laughs> That's where they bury all the bodies. I do remember that morning because I woke up so like, for the first time, I got a good night's sleep in like you know a week because I had this location that I found, and uh, and and then I see Brandon packing his bags. He's like, "Come on, let's go. We're going north." And I was like, "What? What are you talking about? The DP's flying in. He's coming here at like noon." And he goes, "No, no, we can't shoot here." I was like, "I'm shooting here." He's like, "No, we're not. We gotta sh we gotta go look for another location." And I said, "No, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going home. We gotta figure this out, but I'm going home." And he and he was like, "No, we're gonna do it. Just trust me." And then we found another location, which was the one we ended up shooting on, and uh, and it was the most beautiful one out of all three that we had. Yeah. Even even nicer than the one in Ohio. So somehow, like God kept giving us these little gifts uh, along the ways. It was like we'd have really really hard times, and then we'd get like when we showed up at this one location in Ohio, um, we showed up and there was this double wide trailer that we used in the movie and uh it just happened to be on the location i was like oh that's perfect for the art for the you know the owner's st store you know and then we found out that the guy sold it and he was like you know in the process of tearing it down and shipping it and when we begged him to let us use it uh we were like we're gonna be done in three weeks and we'll, you know and then he cut a deal master of deals over here uh, cut a deal with him, and he let us use the the double wide trailer. And so we kept getting like little, and then we had to fly out our whole cast from Ohio, because I had already cast all the smaller roles, and I had no time to recast it. So then they ended up uh, flying all the actors out that we had um, from Ohio. And the tax credit got approved literally over a weekend. Yeah, it was oh, yeah. like submitted Friday, Monday we had approval letter. Forty eight hours. Yeah, it was. So I had. I th uh, three days of prep for the movie, which is insane for for a movie like this. With just the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's like the beauty of independent filmmaking yeah. because you're just in the trenches with people, and all those like happy accidents happen, and it all ends up coming together. And if you're with people, especially that you enjoy being with, it's really it, it makes for a better experience, even though it sucks sometimes. Yeah, just, I like, mean, I, honestly. I would have, I mean, to the testament of everybody on this stage, it was like, you have to work together as a team. Sure. We, we were like, talked about it. It's like going to war every day. Like, you have all the elements against you, and all you have are the people in the trenches. Yeah. And, and this was my team that was like, keeping us going. Yeah. So my question then to off of that is what was the vibe like on set? Because this is a very heavy kind of story and, and there's a lot of heavy scenes. So uh, Thomas and Anne, what was that like? Was there joking around? Did you stay kind of in it? What was it like? Just the whole vibe. Thomas is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's so hard to work with. I just put up with her and yeah. hope, hope she can remember her lines. <laughs> Are you going to say the fucking line this time or just what? You're going to make it up. You're really good at making it up, I got to tell you. Oh, thanks. 
It's both. I think this is one of the wonderful things about why we're here, and it's nice to be celebrated because the thing is, what gets you up every day to go to work is the joy that you have in making something like this, and you are... You feel blessed to be able to get up and work, and it's the trenches are the trenches, but they're, you're doing mm -hmm. something that you love, and um, and it's we did. A we worked on every it day. every night. We, we went loved it. went to dinner every night, pulled every out night. the script for the next day, and worked on yeah, it. Yeah, they worked really hard. I mean, um, every day. We were, it was we really in it, you know. Great to watch these two. Uh, they're such professionals every day. I wouldn't be able to make any of my days if they they came so well prepared, knew their work. I mean, the, creatively, we had such a great time. And anytime we were discussing the script, it was so much fun. Um, but then around us, like everything else was on fire all the time. Like, you know, sure. And then when you have the producers just trying to juggle everything and keep everything, you know, together. And you're trying to shield the, everybody from all of that um, as much as possible. But That's a good example of the vibe. But I did. I found a private golf course that allowed at least the actors to get into. You it, did. That was a gem. A private place where they didn't have to be such anywhere near anybody. So it was, it was an old school southern. Wait, 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 southern wait, 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 I know what's funny about this. I never knew about <laughs> a golf course. Times, um, it was an old school southern like gentleman's club, or, or you know, not like that, but, but <laughs> golf <laughs> club, golf club, <laughs> not a golf club. club. Yeah, but it was old school <laughs> southern. Like, remember that night they had the uh, debutantes come out? Yeah, debutante party. The debutante yeah, party yeah, with all that. I mean, it was all the rich southern <laughs> dames and girls and all that. It was uh, amazing. I mean, that's the, also the beauty of shooting the films that we shoot is you never know where you're going to end up and what you're going to see and the people that you meet and the world that you're sort of introduced to. I mean, who would ever think we'd be involved in this sort of like high society, southern, rich, blue-blooded community out in the middle of nowhere? Um, and we took advantage of it, you know. We did. We went dancing at the Dillatown Club, mm -hmm. and they right. kicked us kicked out us because out. we were being too inappropriate. <laughs> we were being inappropriate. Like, this oh, is boy. not. This is not sexy dancing. These, we these are people that we teach to hold hands and they get married. Just yeah. dancing. Uh, no, you guys. We were not. escorted out a couple <laughs> times from the area. Yeah, the hotel was like, like five minutes from the um, from this lake that we were shooting at. And it was very old school, like beautiful wood, and like, uh, and and at night, you know, we they would go to dinner, and they would ha have their rehearsals. But Tom and Ann, when they get into it, they they get into it. So like, I would show up, and then sometimes they'd be like acting out the scenes and like, and you could hear them from like across mm -hmm. the way. So like everyone else having this quiet meal, and Tom and Ann are like rehearsing. So they started putting us in a private yeah, room. They, 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 they were like, room. Yeah, then they like, maybe this room would be better for you guys. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. But uh, that part and the really hotel fun. we stayed in uh, again, like independent filmmaking, like you got yeah, hook by hook or by crook. The hotel we stand, stayed in was actually shut down, well, so there was no maid service, there was no room service, there was no nothing. You would get a key to your room, and that was that was that. And like, if you need anything, call this number, and there uh, was it was well, like. But the front desk had like, a number. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 the day that I found the location, the main location we were going to film at. I went on Google and was like, what's around here? And I found a hotel. I went there and it was literally closed down, but the guy who bought it just had the key in his hand. He just signed the paperwork mm. and he was opening the door. Mm. So it was an empty hotel. Right. This is one of God's gifts. I want to rent your whole entire us, hotel yeah. out. It was. And we moved in. The whole crew moved into the yeah. hotel, you know, and he was in the process of refurbishing it or he, he just got the keys to the place. And that was fun too. It was like a ghost hotel. It was like the Shining Hotel. It How really was. How many days were you there? How many days? Uh, no, we were there. We were there a month. It was a right? good 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, <laughs> the hot tub. It was the hot tub. Super I must have fun. not been in the hot tub. Scene. Only that the hot tub was not hot at all. Uh, yeah, but yeah. you look so cute in that damn bikini. It didn't Thank matter. You. And the Thank bunny you, suit. Anne. We like well, the bunny suit. Well, that's why. Again, it's independent filmmaking. So I got there. I was like, listen, I want to make sure that this water is really warm for her and that she's comfortable because she's going to be having to get in and out. You know, I've been there as an actor. I know what that's like. So uh, I, I get there I that morning and and you know. Yeah, the the water heater didn't work, so it's freezing cold. So we're like, all right, well, we can't get her in cold water. So they're literally like putting in 
boiling water and like putting it into the hot tub and then they had coffee pot and they had a heater come in and try to heat it so it took usually you know hot tub heats up normally it's a inflatable hot tub so it shouldn't but it took like hours and hours and then it finally got to a, a temperature that she could like sit in there for like five minutes without you know getting hypothermia but she was a real pro about it i mean she didn't complain once Thank you. Yeah, it was fun. I'm glad you guys couldn't see my goosebumps. I, I didn't see them in the film <laughs> yesterday. So, um, When you guys are kind of on that ride, I think maybe back from the police precinct, and you call uh, your brother and you say, we're having trouble with Taylor, was that sort of just a vehicle for you for to set up for later on for the cops to ask him about what's going on? Or was that what was kind of the purpose of that scene? With them now that we know that there was no Taylor all along, yeah. what was kind of the point of him calling his brother and telling him that? Well, the thing is, I mean, the backstory really is that uh, Tom and Ann's characters, they, they play this game, I think it's mentioned, right. that they play this game at home. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they'll take the kid to school. That was the, the, the most it's ever right. gone. Uh, and I feel like... I, I, that Tom and Ann's characters got to a point where the game just wasn't wasn't really working as well. Like, you know, it was getting a little stale mm-hmm. and they started drifting into uh, how the sheriff and his wife kind of relate. And so I think it probably it was Tom's idea to say, hey, let's, let's take a trip. And so they said, let's take a trip. We'll take it outside because he was hoping that would reinvigorate things. Mm-hmm. But he didn't know that she was going to take it to that next place, you right. know. Um, so... Once it started getting really heated, and he, you know, the he was uh, being questioned at the pl- the police office station, and he, he had to put it next to Ken there, and he put his brother's mm-hmm. name. Uh, it was kind of to set up at the end that yeah. the, the you know the brother has to give that piece of information mm-hmm. to let the audience know. But you know, in the in the world of the movie, it was really that he was trying to figure out a way, like for help, right. you know, and who do you call? He was going to call his brother and try to get help from from him. Um, I think at one point we had a scene in the script where it was Thanksgiving, so his brother, there was a scene where his cell phone was ringing and, and he wasn't home, and it was like, and that's why he didn't get, right. uh, get the, the call. Um, but it was really that he was just desperately searching for some sort of help because it was kind of getting yeah, out of hand right. at that point. I have a question about the music because it played a very important role in this film. Did you have an idea of what you wanted it to sound like? Was that, how, how did that process come to be? I mean, I rely a lot on Sasha, so I, I trust him a lot because I worked with him on my first film, and so I don't know if I give him a lot of direction. I, I gave you a little bit. I, there, was a, there was an album, um, Ghost, remember that, by Nine Inch Nails? Yeah. And I liked the, uh, the the music on that. It was kind of electronic a little bit, uh, synthesizer And so I, I just gave him that. I said, listen to this, but I want you to kind of make it your own and, and go with it where you want to go with it. And, he, and then he kind of created it. So I don't, I don't even know what the process was. Yeah, so actually, you know, like, what I absolutely love about Peter Facin is so he gave me a lot of freedom. And you have sometimes, you know, uh, directors, producer who, who wants something particular, so that's... But uh, Peter like was let let me do my things and uh, and he just directed me on the emotions. Uh, the Nine Inch Nails album you gave me like kind of gave us like some the instrumentation, so having like a lot of synthesizers. Mm-hmm. We just added like orchestra, so we had a hundred piece orchestra. We had synthesizers. I usually also go on set, so I went to the LA shoot and I. Uh, recorded a lot of like sounds from the woods, and I incorporated it into the into the score, and yeah, that was that was a beautiful like project together. And he's not like every director's. He's like he has a lot of emotion and sensibility in, him, in himself. And so I'm doing, you know, I try to do a music that is like in front of you know the the film, not just a background sound, just to give like a lot of emotions to it and. Uh, yeah, it was a great, great, great experience. As as our first film together, like that's our second film together. So it was it's, a bit It's good really. Experience. I I talked to Sasha about this. Uh, I said it's really difficult being a composer for films because when you're composing for film, the if you hear the the music, uh, then it's bad composition, you know, because it takes you out of the movie. So you really want to feel the music, and uh, and so when you feel the music, you don't hear it. You just feel it. So in a, in a really good movie, when the co- composing is really good, you don't ever hear it. You'll just 
feel it. It helps, you know, with the feeling of the scene. So whenever, you know, I talked to Sasha, I was like, you're so good, but it must be so hard because nobody hears your music. They just feel it, you know. But I think in this, they, people, a lot of people came up to me and they were like, I love the, the, the composition. It's because it, they feel that um, the emotions of, and it just helps with, the, you know, that scene at the end. I mean, I still get misty eyed when I watch it when Tom and Anna are in the RV. And that it's a lot with their acting, with their the the, the right composition or the music and, and the storytelling. It's just it really gets me um, every time I watch it. And, and know, I feel like so stupid in the back. I'm like, <laughs> I'm actually sorry. I, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank also like all my team, you know, in the music that we never talk about. Like there is more than 110 people that worked in the in this music department. We had a hundred piece orchestra. We had sound engineers. We had like the assistants. Sasha? Where where did you guys record the so orchestra? So we recorded in uh, in Budapest, Budapest, uh, wow. Hungary. It's beautiful we musicians. Recorded, yeah, yeah. They they recorded like Get Out, but but yeah, I had the pleasure sure. to orchestrate. Like, and it's and so fun to watch so too because cool. they'll do it remote, and so he'll yeah. give them the composition, and then he sits in L.A. and he has this like you know you could see them. And to watch them and you know really get into it, these hundred musicians that you know, it's incredible to watch them. Yeah, and also getting rarer, you know, because now everybody's doing their score on a synthesizer. Yeah. You know? and now you can sort of like you can sort of get that sort of fake orchestra sound. It doesn't. It doesn't. So great. It doesn't sound the same. Really it doesn't. It never, yeah. never. Never. You cannot will. replace yeah. no. a human being. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Getting uh, people together, and you know, and those musicians yeah. get to show up and make money doing what they love to do. Absolutely. I mean, it's beautiful. It's such a gift. It's one of the things I love about writing. It's like you could put pen to paper, and then I'll, it blows me away sometimes because I'll be on set and I'll be like, "Wow, there's a hundred people here that are working because I put pen to paper." And I, and and it's it's such a gift for me because I I love acting, but acting is you know it's it's great, but you're there, you do your job, and then you get to go home. And then when you're writing or directing, it's like you're collaborating with hundreds of people and, and then to just watch an, another hundred people, you know, have a job because I put pen to paper. That's, it's so beautiful that I'm able to do that, to be, mm. to be able to put pen to paper and, and all these people get a, to, to work on something and collaborate is, is, is a treat for me. Yeah, that's terrific. I remember the first thing I wrote and, um, and I just watched them, you know, it, it, I remember it was, a. Um, it was a, a, a guy in a, a kid's like like the Barney suit, you know. It was like a, it was called Henry the Happy Hippo, and it was one of the scenes. And I was like, the guy created this suit, you know, for this movie, for a little movie, and it was so fascinating because you write it, and then someone else's imagination then brings that to life, you know. And and so you everyone's there using their imagination, and and, and film is that's the power that I love is that the collaboration where you know you have these actors that bring their imagination, and then. Sasha brings his imagination. The producers are, you know, trying to fix things all the time. They're using their imaginations, and you know, there's just uh, hundreds of people collaborating and, and using their imaginations to like come together to tell the story. And it's a, it's a beautiful uh, art form. Okay, question. Uh, did the actors know the twist the first time they read the script, or did you send them the script and sort of say, "Read this. I'm not going to tell you anything about no, it." No, they they knew the the oh, twist. Really? I think the twist is part of the draw. Too, well, that's why uh, I was wondering if they you know, know if they were a good guy or a bad guy as they're reading. I didn't reading know it. before I read it. Yeah. Right. No, he no. didn't. Do I don't. No. I don't no, remember. Read no, it. Well, he just read yeah. the script. Yeah. And yeah. then it, the reveal came at the, the reveal end. Comes Absolutely. at the end of the script. But I think you know at the end when you when, I think part of the draw to wanting to do this movie, I would think if I was the actor, I'd be like, oh, that's so great because there's this twist. And, and so then taking that, that and then going, well, you know, there's so many elements to how, how do you play that or not play it, you know, and, and figuring that out. And, um, and just watching them kind of come up with like, well, how much do they know and how much do they not know, you know? Because I always thought when I wrote it that they were kind of in this world where they didn't, you know, they play the game and 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 they don't know, you know, uh, because they're so in it. But then they want they wanted to play it like, no, I think we do know, and and so, you know, it's this thing that uh, we're trying to cover up uh, a lot of this too. So so if you go back and you watch the film, you know, Tom's putting the beads in the thing. He's trying to cover that up. There's moments, but they're playing it for each other. So there's this unspoken rule that it's like, if I say green, it's green. If I say black, it's black. So they have to. There's the there's like unspoken rules you know and and I think for Tom's character it's like it's the ultimate form of love was to, to play this game that's how I always thought I don't know for for you Tom but for me it was like 
uh, when I wrote it, I thought, you know, for him to play this game is when he is at the end of the movie and he looks over and sees that tear down his her face and he realizes his his marriage will never be the same. Uh, and then he hits that remote to like start the game over. It's th the ultimate form of love was for him to play this because he knows that by playing this, it's gonna connect them. And by not playing it, you know, it, it, by it not playing destroy. it, you never get laid. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. You know, I think I talked, I, I touched on this briefly last night too. But it's like when even in moments where they're arguing with each other, there's a connection. You know, uh, and so that scene where he slams his fists on the, and he gets up and he tears open. This, it's like this animal thing where they're staring at each other, and it's like, are they gonna? F right now like you know because they're in the midst of this fight but there's this this sexual animalistic tension between the two of them that when they play this game it just it just connects them you know and uh and so i loved that what they were brought to that you know there was this real animalistic uh tension of, of sexual drive you know or when he puts the gun you know uh, when when she says that we have to tell them the truth and then the cop uh sheriff is outside and he puts the gun and he just reaches over and they're like face to face and, and again it's it's very sexual and uh and, I, and it was just a beautiful thing that they brought you know all right, so this is a question for Thomas and Anne. Obviously, your characters have been through so much together and have such a history. How did you uh, work on creating that rapport between the two of you and creating that depth between the characters? Well, we've known each other since we're 25 years old. Um, we have quite a history. Uh, and uh, One of my favorite people to work with is Anne. So uh, when we did the movie, I suggested to Peter that uh, this would be a great project for us to work on. So the rest is kind of built in, you know. I sort of knew that uh, we needed that kind of connection to pull this off. And uh, fortunately, she said yes. Hmm. She, he did. I was in his house. I went to his house. And I think he was kind of sizing me up, too. I remember he was, he was smoking your cigar, staring at me like, I wonder if this kid could pull this off. Um, <laughs> But he did say, uh, you know, I think, because we were talking about girls uh, for, to, for the, to play his wife, and, and he said, you know, I think Anne would be really great for us. I said, I, I love Anne. I wonder if she would do it. And then we reached out. Um, I don't know. if Did you know that or no? She that he, he recommended no, you? No, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not until he was, you know, starting to flirt with yeah. me. <laughs> and uh, to impress me. And, and uh, like, oh my God, this has been a trap the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, it took him long enough. By long hooker, long by crook. He <laughs> was independent filmmaker. But I, I, you know, it was so important to me because the whole movie really, uh, it, it would not work if the chemistry of these two uh, people weren't there. Like, it, you really needed to root for them. And so there were some suggestions of, of some actresses, and I was just like, I, she's a great actress, but she's, she has this hardness about her, and I don't think it would work. You know, she has to, there's a, there's a vulnerability about Anne's role uh, that she has, to, she has to be this mom that's really tr a strong mom, but, but also have this vulnerability, because if you come off too strong, then all of a sudden you push the audience away. And if you come off too vulnerable, then you don't have the, you know, the command of being that, that mom that's gonna be like, I'm gonna you know, protect my, my cubs, you know? And just Anne had both of those qualities. It's not easy to pull off, like the vulnerability and the hardness, and, like, and she just did it seamlessly. And, and, um, and, then, and then the connection with Tom was so important too, because you really had to root for these parents and, and because they're doing such unlikable things, you know? Uh, but but because they're like killing people. Yeah, they're they're literally killing Senselessly. people. And uh, but then you're like, well, it's kind of an accident. I mean, a guy was choking him underwater, and that guy was kind of a dick to you, you know. Um, so you know, so then you're like, you kind of like, all right, I, I feel you 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 want to get to a place where you feel even you feel even worse for them. Like these two parents are having a bad time. Like they lost their kid. They accidentally kill somebody, then they accidentally kill another person. Like, oh my God! Like, you know. So, but but you you have to root for them, otherwise you, you lose the audience. And 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 I feel like they did such a wonderful job because I I watched them and I just um, 
you know, they have this really playful kind of relationship, and then sometimes it's it's funny. Like I never really thought the script was funny, but then there were moments that was, you know, it was okay to laugh because there's so much tension that. Humor is always good mm -hmm. in movies like this when there's like a moment where you can kind of laugh and breathe, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I love that. Find the humor. Find the humor. Yeah. So they brought humor to it, um, and they brought such beautiful colors to it that I I didn't even imagine was there when I wrote it. So that's what you know. As a director, you want to find actors that are going to take the material and then elevate it, you know. And I I was so blessed to have these two. You know, and, and I also thought um, Jason did a really wonderful mm. job, too. You know? yeah. very he understated. Yeah, he, he uh, played really, his, it, worked. Um, it worked. It worked. Really subtly. And, uh, you know, he had a fat pad and, like, a fat you know, pad. You mean he had a, b a belly? Uh, he actually put a fat pad on. Like, people yeah. like, did Jason let himself go? I was like, no, he's, uh, he had a fat pad. I, don't I didn't even realize that was pad. him yeah. until, yeah. like, halfway uh, through. Sorry. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, he's like a chameleon like that. And he plays drums. I don't remember so any fat pad. There was definitely a fat pad. <laughs> he was uh, a fat pad. <laughs> but he had um great. He did a great job. He did a great job. He was very uh, subtle with his performance, which was really nice balance with yeah. what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh and I love the scene between you and it's him scary. when the dog dies. Mm -hmm. That was a great, really great scene. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and he's kind of what I loved about Jason too is like there were moments where he's like kind of thinking well maybe it's the parents and then he feels bad that he was questioning that it was the parents you know in his mind like uh you know he takes him down to the station and he does you know put him through the fingerprints and the swab because you have to suspect everybody but then there's a moment when he finds the beads we talked about this when i talked about it with jason i was like when you find the beads you're like all right it definitely must be uh, Miranda and and her husband. So now you kind of feel bad, and that's why he kind of tells them the truth about his kid. Because at first he's like, "I never lost a child," and that's a really beautiful scene too. And he's like, "You know, I lied to you. Uh, I lost one." And and you could see there was so much emotion and and almost a whisper, mm -hmm. you know. And you really feel his pain when he says he lost his kid. Mm -hmm. That and and a lot of people are like uh, that scene when he's walking up the stairs. And I just, I'm on his feet. And, uh, you know, you get in the editing room, people are like, oh, you don't need that scene. Just cut to him in the bedroom. I'm like, it's, it's he's just that walk going up the stairs, that heavy, you know, foot walk is, is if, I mean, it's foot acting. And he was, and it's genius. Like, he, 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 it's hard to fake or play drunk, you know? And like, when he's, um, you know, shooting at the bottles and then he's going up the stairs, mm. you feel it that he's drunk. And it's well, like... Well, he was. Yeah. Was he? <laughs> was actually I don't know. Whatever he was doing, it worked for me. Worked so I was so like, well. it worked so well that people were like, you don't need the foot scene. I was like, no, I'm keeping that in. I love it. Because I also love moments in movies where, you know, you can breathe a little bit. And for me, the, the walk up the stairs allows you to kind of breathe. So I don't feel like you always need to keep pushing, 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 pushing. You can take a scene and let it play it, pull it back, let it slow down, and let the audience start to wonder too, like, all right, well, who who was it? Who did it? I mean, did, did you guys ever sus suspect or see the ending coming at all? Like, you, I, a lot of people are like, I think I uh, they might have thought, oh, well, I feel like the parents might have done it, but then I was like, Meh, I don't know how they would have done it. So uh, it's okay if you suspect them, but I don't think anybody ever su would suspect that there was no kid, right? Okay. I've never had anybody figure that one out. And, and I tried to be fair like, and put moments in where you could, because it's unfair if you don't do that, give an audience the, uh, so like the, when she's taking pictures off the wall uh, to, to give to the sheriff, there's a, there's a picture, the picture with the Twin Towers is there. So if you're looking at it, you could see it and go, well, wait a minute, she's pregnant and there's Twin Towers there. So like, if you're really being observant, you, did you see it? No. You saw the Twin Towers? I, I noticed it, and then at the end when the sheriff sees it, then I was like, she, she's not 20 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. So yeah, we got one. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm happy when when people catch it because I'm like, I got to be fair to the audience and put that in. And I also didn't want to like... Someone For me, I, I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to cheat and have it be like this, they imagine the kid. So that's why I, I wanted it to put the, you know, that they were watching it on the videotape. So they, right. the child, you know, was being videotaped 
in the trailer in the in the RV so it looks like she's in it with them and they've pretty much memorized this tape so many times from watching it so when they're outside and they're like Taylor you want to you know feed the dog before we go and he's just slightly off cuz you know you could hear like there's like cartoons playing and then they have to wait for the tape to catch up and they're like Taylor Taylor, oh, and then she answers, you know? And it's just that he was just ahead of the tape a little bit. Did you use a different dog from the tape to the... Good question. That was a good question. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, yeah. you're very we observant. Up. Yeah, yeah, we brought that up. too observant. You're like, wait a second. How old is this f***ing dog? <laughs> Seriously. That's right. We had a long conversation so here's, about here's the story with the dog. dog. I mean... Um, I'd like to say that you know the dog was uh, in the in the videotape was younger, so he was skinnier, and then now that he's older, he's fatter. Because you know, but that's not. A, <laughs> I would love to say that, but to be fair, we just kept losing dogs, like because we we shot not losing we it. Lose it. We didn't lose the. We didn't lose the dog. They did no not dogs die. Dogs no dogs were harmed. No dogs were harmed. We During lost the dog day. in the sense that, like, except for that one dog. <laughs> we we <laughs> had a dog, that. and then the lady, <laughs> the lady, you know, wouldn't let her let's use it anymore because it was like I don't know why. And then we had another lady who brought a dog, and I was like, this dog's like. You know, twice as big as that dog, and it's, and you know, but I was like, but it's a pug, so I guess it'll work, you know. And so we had that dog, and then I literally, uh, the lady was there, and I said, um, so we're gonna get to this scene tonight. I need this dog for this scene, and and so I gave her out of my own pocket a hundred dollars, and I was like, can you please stay tonight? I gave her the hundred dollars. And then I came and shot a scene. I came back. I was like, all right, so where's the dog? We gotta get this shot. She left. She left? I gave her $100. She left. She's not we got no dog. She said she had a piece of wear. I was like, yeah. then we but she took her. my $100. And that, that was my money. You feel I so will offended. give you $100 if you stay. That's, 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 that's yeah. that. Talk to Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, good, that was a good. That was a good. Between a director yeah. and a producer. That's the difference. <laughs> the difference between a director and a producer, There's right there. A lot there. of confusion about money and how it was exchanged <laughs> on this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then I had to get another dog uh, the next day from, some, and that dog was like, you know, a medium-sized dog. So the dog was like skitty, then it was fat, then it was medium-sized. A lot of things were happening with the dog. Thanks for pointing that out. Yes. <laughs> But I like to say that it was, uh, you know, a, a choice. <laughs> I like to say that I, I, I chose that. But you no. just admitted that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> well, it's a no choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would like to say on behalf of Mammoth Film Festival, we're so excited that you premiered, world premiered. Oh, me too, Our man. Led here. It was a wonderful film. Thank you. Wonderful performances, and um, we're really grateful to have you. I'm so grateful to be here, too. I, I, it was such a treat for me to actually, I, I was a judge the first year that the um, Mammoth Film Festival opened, and uh, and I've known Tanner for a while, so, so to have a film now in it was such a treat, and, and it really came full circle for me um, to be in invited to, to screen it here. So I couldn't think of any better place to have the, the world premiere, and, and I'm grateful for everyone yeah, who came and watched festival, it. It's a great festival, guys. It's a really fun, it's a really well yeah. put together, too. So thank we're, you. We're, we're happy to be here. Thank awesome. You guys. Well, thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you guys for all. coming. Yeah. Appreciate it.